Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be looking at Haiti and the Haitian Revolution. When most people think about Haiti, they think about the natural disasters that destroyed the country. They think about the 2010 earthquake, and they also think about how Haiti is one of the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. But there is more to Haiti than just that. By looking at the Haitian Revolution, we'll come to understand how Haiti became the first independent black nation in the Western Hemisphere and how they was able to plan the uprising that saw the defeat of Britain, France, and Spain, and also how Haiti changed the world and made it the way it is today. In 1659, Haiti started off as a French colony, Saint Dominique. It was the western third of the island Hispaniola. French colonists brought over slaves from the transatlantic slave trade to use as labor in the plantations to produce sugar and coffee. With the plantations and the free labor force established, St. Domingue became an enormous source of wealth for France, and by the 1760s, it had become the most profitable colony in the Americas. However, with the economic growth came an increase in the exploitation of the enslaved people. The population of the colony was overwhelmingly enslaved, with a minority of whites and free people of color. In 1789, while the colony was flourishing, the French Revolution broke out in mainland France. The revolution caused the white minority that controlled the colony to split into two factions, royalist and revolutionary. Sensing an opportunity, the slave of Norton St. Domingue organized and planned a massive rebellion, which began on August 22, 1791. Within two weeks, they quickly gained control of the entire northern province with only a few isolated fertile camps still in control by the whites. During this time of fighting, the rebels were not demanding independence from France but were demanding freedom from slavery. Despite that, the newly elected legislative assembly in France were determined to stop the revolt, so they dispatched 6,000 soldiers to the island. This conflict didn't go unnoticed by other nations, so in 1793, both Britain and Spain decided to enter the conflict seeking to lessen French control in the island. Britain wanted access to the wealth that St. Dominique provided, while Spain, who already controlled the eastern half of the island, wanted total control. To prevent military disaster, French commissioners Liguer Felicite Sonota and Etienne Pouverel freed the slave in St. Dominique in their declaration of abolition on August 29, 1793. This was a big achievement for the former slaves and a shock to the nations as they were able to gain civil and political rights in the new world. At this point in time, Toussaint Leverture, a self-educated former slave and one of the most successful black commanders was on the side of Spain fighting against France. Later, due to some obscure reason, he turned against Spain and joined forces with France. Like other rebels, Toussaint wasn't seeking independence from France, but wanted St. Domingue to be rebuilt by blacks and whites with slavery being abolished. So in 1795, with his help, France was able to gain control of Santo Domingo from Spain and made them cease attacks on St. Domingue. Meanwhile, with Spain defeated, Britain still had ambitions to control the island. So in 1795, they initiated the great push to conquer St. Domingue. However, their ships were wrecked by a storm before they were able to reach the island, so their plans had to be halted. In 1796, they continued to have bad fortune and were plagued by yellow fever. Out of the 60,000 soldiers that left Britain, only 10,000 made it to St. Domingue. With British numbers decreasing, Toussaint began his attack, and by July 1797, British Colonel Thomas Maitland wanted a total withdrawal from St. Domingue. So on May 1798, Maitland and Toussaint agreed on an armistice and Britain was allowed to leave St. Domingue. By defeating Britain, Toussaint was later able to consolidate control on the island, and in 1801 he issued a constitution that made him governor for life. However, then leader of France, Napoleon Bonaparte had other plans. He wanted to secretly restore slavery on the island, so he later dispatched a large force of French soldiers to St. Domingue under the guise of expedition. He also ordered his men to respect Toussaint until the forces were established. Then they would summon Toussaint to arrest him. In 1802, with their forces established, France invaded St. Domingue. They ordered Commander Henry Christophe to surrender the city of Lake Cap. However, France underestimated their thirst for freedom and unwillingness to go back to life in chains. Rather than surrendering, they set the city on fire. And with that, the fight between the former slave and slave masters resumed. 
Eventually, the battle at Krat Alapier Fortress became the main focus as Toussaint and Commander Jean-Jacques de Salines joined together to stop France. Toussaint fought on the field while de Salines held down the fort. They were able to hold back French forces while defiantly singing songs of the French Revolution, emphasizing the right of all men to be equal and free. This psychological warfare worked. Some French soldiers began to question the reason for fighting for black enslavement when the French Revolution promised to make all men free. Unfortunately, on the night of March 24, 1802, after 20 days of fighting, the Salinas ordered his men to abandon the fort. They had ran out of food and ammunition. On April 25, 1802, the situation got better for France when Commander Henry Christophe, along with much of the Haitian army, defected to their side. France promised slavery would not be restored to the island, so after being promised their freedom, Toussaint and Dessalines agreed to surrender. However, Toussaint was deceived, captured, and shipped to France where he later died while Dessalines was rewarded and became governor of St. Mark. Despite the loss of these high commanders, the black resistance did not stop. There was continued fighting throughout the countryside and yellow fever continued to decimate French numbers. By July 1802, France had lost about 10,000 men to yellow fever and when news came back to Napoleon, he sent about 20,000 reinforcement to the island. In October of that year, the Salinas switched sides again and began fighting against France. Eventually, on November 1803 at the Battle of Vétiraz, the rebels were able to give France a decisive defeat. France later surrendered and were allowed to leave the island aboard British ships. And finally, on January 1, 1804, from the city of Gonaive, the Salinas officially declared Haiti's independence. Now that you understand the Haitian Revolution, you might ask me, hey, how did Haiti, one of the richest colonies in the Americas, become one of the poorest nations in the world? One thing you have to understand is, after the Haitian Revolution, Haiti had a real deal uphill battle. Haiti had to pay France 150 million francs just to be recognized as an independent nation. Haiti didn't stop paying these reparations until 1947. And also, Haiti had corrupt government after its independence. They were used the money that Haiti was getting just for themselves and it wasn't even used for the people. So how much you think a small nation could do with all those factors going against it? But one thing you have to understand is, without the Haitian Revolution, France and Napoleon wouldn't be inclined to have the Louisiana Purchase. And the Louisiana Purchase gave US most of its western territory. And if Haiti stayed a French colony, Napoleon would have had the resources to keep on fighting and expand his control throughout Europe. So when you look at Haiti, just think about the revolution and how hard it was for them to get their independence and also how hard it was for them to keep that independence and for them to flourish. If you're still watching this video, thank you. It took me a lot of time and effort just to put this video together. I had to write the script, I had to do the animation, I also do the visual. But I appreciate you for being here. And if you like this video, and if you think I could do anything better, just leave a comment below. And also subscribe and put on post notifications because I will be making more videos. And thank you for watching. I appreciate it.